Hey guys, this is Brian at Obedia, and today we're going to talk about how we can manually create a MIDI part in Personas's Studio One digital audio workstation. After we do that, we're going to experiment with a little bit of quantizing on the notes that we create and show how we can use that to change our sound up. So I have here a blank Studio One session, of course, and I'm going to go ahead and first off, drag in a new virtual instrument. So I'm going to make use of the Mojito here. I like the name of it. I like the drink. And uh, we're going to go ahead and use the Mojito for our sound experimentation today. So I've created my Mojito channel here just by dragging it into my Studio One session. The next thing that I'm going to do is begin programming some MIDI notes. Now, Usually, I could record those using a MIDI keyboard, but today I'm going to show you how we can manually enter those notes. And we're going to do that by making use of the paint tool here in the top half of the Studio One interface. So I'm just going to click on that. And then in my Arrange window, I'm just going to double click and I'm going to create a new MIDI part. So this is a new blank MIDI part, and now I need to put some MIDI notes into this. So I'm going to select my arrow tool and I'm going to double click on my MIDI part. This is going to open the MIDI editor in the bottom half of Studio One. Now let's go ahead and pick out a sound in the Mojito. It doesn't really matter which one. Let's go ahead and use, let's say, about fat bass. We'll create a little bit of a bass line here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on fat bass. Now I've got the fat bass preset opened up in the Mojito, and I can listen to the sounds of the Mojito just by clicking on my virtual keyboard right here. So now I know what that preset sounds like, and the next thing that I want to go ahead and do is manually program some MIDI notes. So I'm going to do that again by making use of the paint tool here in the MIDI editor. I'll just click on it. And now I can enter some MIDI notes. So now I'd like to hear how that sounds. So let's go ahead and set a loop region right here. And we'll engage loop in our transport. And let's play that back. So there we go. We have a new MIDI part. There's a bass line. And of course, we can tweak the Mojito to make this sound differently. But what I want to do is I want to go ahead and quantize these notes a little bit. Now, usually quantizing is really useful if you've manually recorded your notes. And let's say that you had played your performance a little bit off. You can use quantizing to bring your notes back to the exact resolution that you would like them to play back at. However, I'm going to go ahead and use this for a little bit of experimentation right now. So I'm going to click on my arrow tool, and I'm going to select all of the notes that I manually programmed in. So they are now selected. They're glowing orange. And now what I can do is in the quantize section of my MIDI programming window right here, I can click on this pull-down box. Now I have a lot of different MIDI quantize options which are available to me. And if I click on one of these, let's go ahead and select 132nd. This is going to change my grid size. And now it's also changed a little bit of how these notes are going to play back. So we can hear a little bit of a difference right there. So I can experiment with this and see what kind of sound I like. That's a little too simple. Let's go to 1 8th. kind of like that. It has sort of a, a crawling kind of a sound to it that could be really nice for a slow track or maybe even for something that would ramp up to a little more complex. So 1 8 sounds kind of cool. We'll go ahead and use that. Now I also have a couple other options right here in the quantize section which I can make use of. If I have auto applied this means that any note that I create is going to automatically be quantized in my MIDI editor. And I also have snap enabled, and this means that any note that I create is going to automatically snap to the grid. So again, if I take my paint tool 
and I create a new note. This is going to create a note that's going to snap to the grid size, so you can see this is filling up the space which I painted the new note into. So, if I don't like that, I can erase it by just taking the eraser tool and clicking on that note. I could click any other note to delete it as well right now, if I wanted to. Now I can also have a little more fun with this with a couple other options. The first one is swing. Here I have the swing bar, and if I change my swing, you're going to notice that my grid size is going to change. So what this means is that I'm going to add, again, a little bit of extra complexity to my notes. So now I've changed my grid size, and now any notes that I program in are also going to have a little bit of swing to them. So that's got a little bit of definition, and I may or may not like that. I might fool around with it a little bit more later, but there's another option that I can have some fun with here, and that's humanization. In order to humanize my notes, I'm going to go ahead and again select all of the notes which I've manually programmed in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and right-click on one of these notes, and I'm going to select the option Humanize. Now what this is going to do is it's going to change the velocity and the length a little bit for these notes. And as I do this and I continue to humanize, I'll see things start to change on my notes. Now, I can listen to this, and if I don't like it, I can go backwards, of course. I can select, right-click, and then select Humanize Less. And this will take a little bit of the humanization away from these notes. So now, humanizing, again, can be very useful for when you are programming notes and you want them to not sound very robotic. Sometimes when we manually program notes, they can come off a bit too robotic, and that is not always something that we are looking for in our sound. This can also be really useful with drums because you can add a little bit of a human effect to the drums that you have manually programmed in and make them sound a little bit more real. So using all of these different options, I can have a little bit of fun with my notes. I can make much more dynamic MIDI parts. And of course, this also allows me to be very precise about the sound that I would like to get out of my programmed notes. You'll want to experiment a little bit with quantizing and humanization when you are manually programming MIDI notes in order to find the sound that you're really looking for for your track, no matter what part you might currently be programming. As always, I hope that this is useful to you guys. Please stay in touch with me. My email address is brian at obedia.com. You can get me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash obediatutor. And of course, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash obediatutor. As always, thank you very much for watching. Keep mixing, keep making music and having fun. And I'll see you guys next tutorial.